Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vicente Lachschmidt. Please let me know if you can hear everything well on, on our end. I have to apologize. It seems that we had a couple of little internet uh, issues right now, but hopefully that should be uh, coming up uh, well again soon. Uh, my name is Vicente Lachschmidt, as said, and it's a pleasure to welcome all of you here to today's webinar with Giovanna Ricardo, all about a live portrait shooting with models and flowers. We're incredibly excited to get going. Uh, today's session is going to be really fascinating. We're going to be seeing Giovanna do a live photography session from her studio. You're going to be seeing her work live. You're going to be able to see exactly how she works, how she's speaking with, uh, with her models. You're also going to be able to see her edit these pictures live. And at the very end, a sort of a special gift for all of you, you will also be able to download and take home with you the raw images that Giovanna will be providing. Now, a little bit about uh, BenQ before we get started. For those of you who don't know, you see here on the screen right now, we have the, the BenQ Photo View Monitor series, the SW series. Um, the SW series is, uh, is one of the two product lines that BenQ has, which is really made for, uh, for artists. We have the PD series and we have the SW series. The SW series is built from the ground up for photographers, which many of you no doubt are. We also have the PD series, which uh, are really more geared for content creators, for designers, and also come with a special uh, bevy of uh, features really built for Mac users in mind. You should see here also on the right side of the screen, uh, the different links that you can access, the photographer monitors, monitors for Mac. You can also see the upcoming webinars, uh, the AccuColor Instagram page, as well as also Giovanna Ricalo's Instagram page. Uh, if you are someone who works with photography and you do a lot of editing, then you know how important colors are to your work. You want to be sure that you're seeing the most color accurate uh, colors possible when you're working. Perhaps you've had the issue that you're working on a photograph, you go to print it out or you see it on, on another device and you're noticing suddenly that the red, the yellow, the blue, the different colors that you had simply don't look the way that you expected them to. With BenQ, you have the assurance to have the most color accurate monitor possible uh, while you're working. And we're also just thrilled to see that um, our ambassadors, uh, like Giovanna Ricalo herself, have been using BenQ now for a number of years. And it's just thrilling for us to see how uh, the, the monitors have really grown in popularity. And uh, as you've been seeing in some of the videos here, not just Giovanna, but really professionals from all over the world. On to Giovanna herself. For those of you who don't know, Giovanna is a fine art, uh, fine art photographer who's been working as a photographer now for uh, 10 years and really has an incredible portfolio behind her, having worked with dozens, if not 100 models by now, also for very large, uh, large campaigns, marketing campaigns, uh, really bringing her unique style, her, her sort of the style of beauty of princesses, of fairy tales, but in al always in a very elegant way. And this is on an international level as well. So the last thing I'll say before we get started, before I welcome Yovana to the stage, uh, all of our participants today will be receiving a 10% discount code on the BenQ PD and SW monitors. Uh, that will be shown later on during the webinar, but we'll also be sending it in the follow-up email. So without further ado from me, I'd like to call Giovanna to the stage and I'm wishing everyone a wonderful webinar. We will be having also a Q&A session at the very end, but feel free to ask questions uh, for Giovanna. We'll, we're really looking forward to engaging with all of you. Thank you, Vicente. Thank you, people, and welcome on today's webinar. I'm very excited because today's webinar will be all about live photography session where I will connect the camera with the laptop and you will see immediately the photos. I'm very happy because something this is so interesting. Um, okay, so I will share the presentation with you and I will share the content first. So today we will be telling, uh, creating the story of the image. I love to tell, uh, all, to always have a theory before I start creating photos because I always have some words to say before we start creating the photos. And uh, there is always have to be some story behind the images. The next is when it comes to live shooting session, uh, we will, 
I will be talking about the lightning, the modal posing, elements, and editing. And at the end of this webinar, we will be having question and answer sections. So make sure to ask the question during this webinar, as many as you can, because uh, at the end, we will be answering together. So if you have some question about the lightning, the posing, about the modal, the scene, make sure to ask and don't be afraid. So let's start. Creating the story of the image. So I am perfectionist. Every time when I'm thinking about the set, I love to sit down and write down ideas on the paper because I know that my brain will save this information and it will be easier for me on the set to create the whole scene and to finish it much quicker. So when it comes to the story of the image, there is a few things that I have to pay attention on. So when it comes to a story, Story is filled with composition, the, with backdrop, elements, model selection, and body language, and camera settings. When it comes to composition, I'm not a big technical person, but I always love to say more easier way, way for you when it comes to composition. So composition for me means how you place the elements in the photos. So there is no wrong way, but there is some rules when it comes to composition. You have to have something on the left side, on the right side, and in the middle. What you will place in the composition that tells about the concept and how the images will look at the end. Um, composition can be uh, fuller and not like the full composition. So uh, when it comes to empty composition, what, uh, what is actually empty composition? Empty composition is when you have a white wall and you place the model in front of the wall. Uh, if you are creating photos inside, then you don't have anything uh, elements which you have to speak on. You don't have composition. You don't have a story. But if you, if you are creating the images, uh, if you are placing the model on the snow outside, that is a full composition. Why? Because the full composition is snow. So there is a totally full story with the snow. You don't need to place additional elements because snow tells a lot. And if you place on a huge uh, snow amount, additional elements, you won't see them. And they will be so small. And if the model stands in a black dress in the snow, that will be a full composition. When crea creating photos inside, the composition is a little bit trickier. You have to think what to place around the model. So today I will be talking more about the composition and what um, of the elements can Part of composition. So what you see behind, you don't need a whole backdrop, especially if you're creating portraits. You only need one corner. For example, if you especially color, you need a color. If you have a white wall, then you have to think about the backdrop. Uh, you have to think hmm, uh, what color to add. Um, depending what elements you are using uh, in the photos. Um, and do you want a bright or the dark backdrop? Um, I want to say, uh, before I uh, go further, uh, what level are you at photography? So are you just starting with photography? Are you a hobby photographer? Are you a professional one? Because I would love uh, to see. I'm always interested to hear at the beginning. Let's see. Kobe, just starting or haven't started yet? I'm always uh, interested to see how the, the lines are changing. Okay. Many of you said hobby, then just starting and professional. Okay, you are all there somehow. So this webinar will be so interesting to you. Nice. Hobby. I remember when I started with photography and when it was hobby and I was oh, so excited for the scenes, for the model, for everything. I'm still, but you know, when you're starting, everything is much more excitement. Thank you so much. So many of you said hobby. Okay. So uh, when it comes to elements, elements are a big part of the composition, all the storytelling, and with elements, you're telling the story. So what elements you're using in a photo. If the, it's inside, uh, do you, will you use only one candle, more candles? Will you use other element? Maybe you will create something else um, inside the studio just to create. And um, outside also, so elements are part of the story and how many elements. I always say, when you're done sure what elements you want to use, make sure to use only one element because one element, you can tell a story. With three elements, 
there is a different stories, and especially if you don't know how to control elements in the photos, th this will be too much for you. So make sure to go one by one, and uh, make sure to use elements which are in a great connection. For example, if you're using candles, make sure to add lights. If you use lights, make sure to add more candles or something that is lighting also, maybe lamp or something else. So make sure to have some connection in your photos. When it comes to model selection and body language, model is a main part of the story, main actor. So uh, if you're not sure about the concept, make sure to always choose the model first, because sometimes based on the model facial expressions and body, you can create the story. So better to choose a model it fits to the story and not taking photos of anybody who, who you see. Most of the people uh, say, oh, I have a friend, I will create photos of him and we will finish. No, it's better to search for the model months and months and to find the perfect per person who will fit to the concept and you will have mind-blowing images than to creating photos of the friend and do not have the best results. I'm not saying this only means if um, your friend doesn't fit to the concept, if uh, they fit and you find it then very interesting, just go ahead. And always make sure to follow the body language. If the model is too shy, make sure to not ask too much from the model. If the model is confident, then you can control the poses. And camera settings. When it comes to camera settings, it really depends what lenses are you using. Do you want more fantasy look, dreamy look? Do you want more like wide and what settings you're using uh, really uh, depends if you want to use some special effects, uh, do you want uh, to have movements in your photos, uh, do you want to use lights. So today uh, I will share the camera settings with you also. Okay, now I want to ask you the second question, which will be um, when you think what is most important to you uh, about the concept? Is it finding the right location, finding the right model, or creating the scene? For me, it's all of these three, but let's see your answers. Let's see, creating the scene. Uh, all of these three are in a great connection. So let's see, uh -huh. creating the scene, most of you, finding the right model and finding the right location. Oh my God, why? <laughs> okay, let's see. Yeah, scene is a part of location. What location you will see is what you've seen you will create on location. So it's almost, but yeah, as I said, for me, the scene is also the most important thing because scene is more most interesting and model, you know, is part of the scene. It's like a part of the movie. Okay, thank you. Most of you said creating the scene. Nice. Okay, now I want to share more what will be happening today in live portrait shooting. So today uh, I will share, I will introduce you to the scene and talk a bit about the composition and the elements. Then I will introduce you to a model and I will communicate with the model. I will share the poses, then the light, lightning. I discovered some lightning techniques uh, lately, which I will share with you today, which is so interesting uh, to use uh, if you are creating photos in a studio and which adds so much shadows and you can play with lights. I know the natural light is uh, the most beautiful light, but inside you can create also uh, to uh, look very interesting and mysterious. And at the end, we will be editing uh, two images from today's set. And at the end, I will share a few images with you, which you can edit together. Uh, like everything we pass, you can do uh, on these images. Okay, so I need now a few minutes just to connect the camera and I will get back to you. Thank you, Jovanna. While Yovana gets that, uh, gets everything, uh, gets everything to, into place. Uh, remember, here at the bottom right, you have the Q and A uh, box. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, or if you're having any sort of technical difficulties, please let us know. I uh, wanted to give a couple of notes here on the links that you're seeing here on the right side. The link number four about the Pantone Connect Premium offer. Uh, this is at the moment an exclusive offer from BenQ, which was started this year. All users, BenQ users of the PD and the SW series uh, have the right to one year free with Pantone Connect Premium. Uh, this is valued at, at approximately 90 euro, or if you're coming from the UK, this is uh, over 100 pounds. Uh, as many of you know, with the Adobe 
uh, with the Adobe Creative Cloud, the Adobe package. This was used to be something that was included. It now is not anymore. But a year from from BenQ, we're offering this as a as a one year one year free license that you would be getting as a BenQ user with the PD or the SW series. Uh, you can find there on the page all of the um, all the different steps on how to on how to activate that for yourself. Another point that I want to make is the number five, our BenQ AccuColor Instagram. If you're enjoying today's webinar, we have really a bevy of different events happening every single month in different languages, French, Italian, Poland, uh, in Polish, in Spanish, uh, in German, different events, different contests as well. And you'll just find a lot of great inspiration also about uh, different topics when it comes to photography. Some of you might be aware we just recently had a photography contest for all of Europe. Uh, on the topic of senses so people had to users had to capture one of the of the five senses in a photograph and that was really quite a quite fascinating to see we're actually announcing the winners right now which you can also see on our instagram if you are not yet following Jovana on her instagram we also highly recommend you do that uh, if you enjoy Jovana's work you're going to see dozens if not hundreds of different images from all over the world from different campaigns she's been on and uh, different clients that she's worked with uh, i've worked with Giovanna now for close to five years and it's really remarkable to see just how proactive and how hard working she is uh, it's very often not enough to just be talented in what you do it really is how much work you put into it and it's remarkable to see how really how prolific Giovanna has been in her work and in her in her passion for photography and to really see how much she has grown. There's really some fantastic, a fantastic timeline there for you to see from the beginning of Giovanna's journey as a photographer to really the level that she's reached now. And it's really quite an, uh, an inspiring uh, journey to see. And what is also important, we added the lights here because I wanted to add more atmosphere into the image. And that is why I want to introduce you to the beautiful model today, Natasha, come here. Okay, this is Natasha. <laughs> okay, I chose her because everything is white and dreamy and wintry and she has a black, black hair and pale skin, so I wanted to connect with her to the scene. So that is why, and also the dress is white because it fits and connected the whole scene, everything is so, um, how, how to say, uh, smooth and beautiful, gentle and feminine. So that is why uh, for me it's important to have everything in connection. So Natasha, now can you sit here? I will now place her and then uh, I will add the lights. Okay, always make sure pay attention to the candles, please, because we have so many candles. Make sure if you're using the long dress, make sure to always place the dress to look nice. Can you go up? Yes, perfect. And go a little bit closer to the lights. Okay, and on the left side, we have here, because we are using candles, we have to pay attention, yeah, about, okay, I love this scene, but now I wanted to show you something, I discovered this uh, reflective material, which if you place it, whatever you want, because it's with a tape, and if you place the light, there, I'm using man light. You see, it adds shadows. That's what you see on the wall, you see? And you can really play with it. It's so beautiful and so interesting. It adds so, so much into the scene. Okay, now when I turn on the light, I want to see how everything is looking. First, I will do the test shots. So I will make the ISO a little bit higher because it's a little bit dark here. Later on, I can change it. And shutter speed is 160, let's see. Okay. Making it full screen. That's better. Can you see the photos? Yes, we can see the photos. Uh -huh. Satisfied. I'm not. I'm not sure why it's closed. Okay. And Natasha, can you now more turn the face into the into the flowers? And I want to place her hair. Go back a little bit in the flowers like this. 
that I want to have connection in C. Okay, and maybe you can uh, hold the, uh, yeah, towards the face and maybe look there. Yes, maybe uh, look here. Yes, here. Can you look here somewhere? Yes. I want her to look up. Hmm. I'm not satisfied with the hands. Maybe something like this. Yes, like this. Uh huh. Now this is better. Yeah. Look at the camera. Let's see, I see. Look down a little bit. Make sure to always go around the model. Natasha, can you now look up a little bit and maybe place the hands on the lap? Yeah, something like that. I miss that her something to hold in her hands. I will give her now this to be part of the scene. So you will place it somewhere here and maybe next to the face. Maybe this side. Just to see how it looks. Yeah, maybe look more, more. Yes, yes. You see, now we have a nice shadow. You maybe look here. Yes, right. Okay. And yeah, always pay attention to the hands. Make sure to like more gentle. Yes, like that. Uh huh. And more towards the face. Nice. Yes. And look at the camera. Oh wow! I love the light in the background. You see, if you place the light behind the model. If you add more atmosphere, so the light is adding the atmosphere and the lighting in the candles. Natasha, can you look at this way? Okay, now I will go a little bit on the front like this. Maybe you can, to, uh, towards me, just to, yeah, your body, maybe you can, uh, yeah, put your hands down and maybe you're here. Make sure to always fix the hair and maybe if you can do all the way like this. Yes. Somehow like that. And maybe you can add it or hold it down. Maybe more towards face or around the eyes. I love to make interesting the composition where you see everything, something is happening around the eyes, where, where you have in uh, sparkling the eyes or something like that. So, okay. Uh, look at the camera. I will go more closer. I really loved the first, the first angle. I really loved it. And now I want her to to maybe go uh, change your position. Uh, put your legs on that side. Yes, because I want her on the side. I want to. Uh, create photos of the chin and to have more lines. So I always love to play with the lines. Take it there and go so much closer and watch to the candles. <laughs> and only one more step. Uh, move, movement. Yes. Nice, nice. And now you can do something with the left, something like this, yes. And I will give you her because I think this. Let's try. If you're not sure, make sure to dry, but if you're not sure with flowers, you can use something else. Maybe like this. Yes. And like lean your head on the yes. Now I want to add more here. Here. Yes. And make sure to always uh, to not have here like straight. Make sure to always have something, you know, messy here. It's always looking good in the bottom. You see like this where I'm spreading the hair around her. Yeah, it looks like it's going with the scene, with this scene. Okay, can you, Natasha, look somewhere here? And like you are awakening something in a dreamy world. Make sure to, like, surprisingly face a little bit, yes. So look up. Mm -hmm. Not too much, a little bit here, up, yes. And I always love to use focal length about two because I love dreamy and fantasy look at the end. Can you tell me, do you see the images cropped on the screen? Because I see a li little bit cropped and it's not on the camera. So 
Yeah, Giovanna, if you can hear me, the, the images do seem a bit cropped on, uh, yeah. on the top there. Let's see. And now? Ah, yes. Now, now it's better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Natasha, can you look over there? And again, now I want you like you're sleeping on the flower. Make sure to like hug the flower with both hands like this. Yes. And just place it nice and look down somewhere. Yes. You see now I want to see the neck. Yeah. Oh, nice stay like this. I love this. Every time when the image is uh, shooting going like moving, I love the end results always. Let's look at the camera. And here you have two choices. If you want to take photos from the up, or if you want the same line. I, I choose the same line because I have the lights in back of the model, so it looks it gives to the scene, and also I see the candles and the, yeah, that. Can you touch the now look there? And maybe, I don't like this part. Maybe you can uh, place it on the other side somehow. Yes, and maybe put now here, yes. Here and maybe your head here is yes, and more to the face. Yes, and look there in that direction. Mm -hmm. Love it. And make sure to relax your mouth a little bit. Right. Now, I wanted to add a little bit more, it's a little bit too dark here, so I wanted to. Turn on this light also. Usually I use one or two light sources. I will turn on. And this one I'm controlling the phone. Okay, so we can choose to have more temperature, intensity. Do we want more cooler or warmer tones? I choose cooler tones because the whole set is about the winter. Oh, nice. Natasha, can you look here? Up a little bit? Yes. And more closer to the face. Mm -hmm. yes. I'll make eyes so now less. And now, can you, like in front of you, the whole, like you are grabbing, uh, you can put the, this one uh, here because we're creating the portrait, so we want to see. Maybe like this to uh, covering our face with maybe turning like to me. Yes. Yes. And uh, yes, 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 perfect, perfect. Yes. Look here. I always love to have like she is thinking about some. Uh, fairy tale scene, and so I love these type of the poses when it comes to scenes like this. Be sure to now put your hair on in front, yes, like this. And maybe now I want her to hold the candle. Huh, this would be interesting. I think this one is okay, maybe in front of you, like this, because I want more lights. More lights on her face. Yes. Maybe it's something like holding. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, nice. Stay like that. No, no. Let's wait to see. I think the camera disconnected a bit. Wait a second. Can you see the images? Yes. yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Look at the camera. Nice. Maybe more relaxed than all. Uh, Yovana, at the moment it's not in full screen and we see the menu on top. Uh -huh, yes. Sorry. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at the camera. Right. So I really love the candle here because it really adds the scene and the whole atmosphere. I always create most uh, more photos in one scene because usually 
if uh, she blinked or if she smiled or she, you know, the image is out of the focus, I want to be sure to have more images the same. It's easy to delete them. And a little bit like you're surprised. Yes, perfect. Oh, nice. Oh, this is amazing. Usually, I'm very excited when I create images. Models are always smiling. Okay, we we'll cut more. I really love this scene, and I want to create as many here on this set. Okay, like this. Yes. Now I will put the candle down. Yes, and maybe now I want you to go up a little bit. Good job. <laughs> maybe to stand somewhere here, like the place of the head, like this. Just to move the candles, I will tell you. Yes. Maybe like this. And somehow to bring this plan in your face like this. Yes. Yes. And now I will also focus more. Oh, nice. And the back. Yeah, this is going around, maybe with both hands, yeah. Can you look, uh, I can't see your mouth, maybe, yes. Uh -huh. I want to see what is happening here when I blink, you see? With this projector, it's so nice because you can change if you want to like pull. You see, if you want to close the scene, you see, we have now. So I want to add a little bit here. You see, why it's not too much. And the second one, I will make intensity a little bit more long. Okay, let's see. This is okay. Maybe I will place it somewhere. Here. Make sure to always, if you have backlight, make sure to always have some light in front of you because in that case uh, it will reflect on the face. If you if the face is too dark, then it's not the best thing. Let's watch out with other cameras. What <laughs> is <laughs> challenging with the flower? It's always nice. No, nice. Yeah, perfect. Stay like that and put your hands down, yeah. Because here I want to focus only on the face. Yeah, look there. I love how behind you see like the sun flare, like the sunlight. Moving more to color, like only hold with uh, both hands. You can uh, hold, and you see like the hugging. It's not that easy. So people <laughs> don't say models, it's easy to model, but it's not. Okay, maybe just a... Sometimes you will see that the flowers want to listen to you. Okay, nice. I will go closer because I want to have this frame of the flowers and her face. And here. Now maybe you can stand somewhere here, and maybe you can place the hand, to put the hands on here, but watch out about the cameras. Just stand here and not move. Yes, like this. And now I'll focus more. Watch out. Maybe like this, like you are going to somewhere. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, love it. Yes, look at the candles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make sure to look at the camera now. Yes. 
I'm using 50 millimeter slants, and now I have to go a little bit further from the model because I want to create more of the scene. Yeah, like this. Maybe you can now stand only like that, and you can hold this right. We, we made this, so I wanted her just to maybe somehow to put on the, like this. Yeah, like that. And maybe hold the face, like your, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Maybe like you want to catch something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Look at your camera. I think you can stand, but uh, yes, like that. No, wait. <laughs> I want. What if we put here as a like this? It's a little, uh, can you go a little bit? Yeah. It's a little bit. Bigger, yes, like that. And maybe, yeah, just hold it a little bit, like you're gentle hold. Yeah, yeah, nice. And look at the camera. Mm -hmm. Look there in front of you. And only one step here, if you can stand, because I don't want this flower as a backdrop. Here, 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 here. Sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Look at the camera and make sure to put your hands this down and only to hold with the other hand. If, if, if you can. Yes, maybe you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect, perfect. No, just a little bit. I love how uh, the pose is connected. Good, yeah. With the flowers and with the candles, you can add so much to the scene. So if you have some flowers or you, can, you see something when you walk, make sure to use it because you never know how it can be. Model can uh, hold it, can, you, you, you can put on hands, you can put around the dress, you can put on the here. So everything looks, looks much nicer and going to the scene. Let's see, look at the camera. <laughs> yes, yes, I stay like that. Try to hold it. Wow, I love the light behind. Nice. Mm -hmm. Look at the camera. This one is my favorite. Maybe I'm thinking you to sit down and then mm -hmm. give you again. Now her here <laughs> will be full of this. <laughs> But it's okay. If the model is afraid to use uh, like the flowers, uh, that the line or something like that, make sure to use wig <laughs> because it takes time to take off all the seeds. Yeah, and you can maybe do this because I want to have a composition now on the face. You see, if we use this way, we have hands left and right, and we have something on the head. So let's see how it looks. Yes, nice, stay like that. I will make my circle here. Look at the camera. Nice. Look somewhere here. Okay. Maybe now, like this, hold. Like, yes, yes. Uh huh. Ooh, love it. Look at the camera. Let's see something also is happening. Wait just to detect the camera again. Can you see? Hi, Ivana. Yeah, we can see the screen. See something stopped. I don't know why. The tether. Okay, we have a few more photos just to find the camera. I don't know why disconnected. Okay. 
Here we go. Sorry. Okay, look at the camera. Let's spin it more like face on the side. Yes. Stay like that, don't move. I will place more like this. Yes. These are my favorite. Can you look somewhere here? Look again at the camera. More uh, face up. Make sure to always communicate with the model because in that case that will be more, more motivated for them and they will feel more confident if they know what they are doing and if you say, oh my god, yes, it's amazing, you look nice and if you're satisfied. Look like you, um, make sure to close your eyes a little bit. Yeah, slow down. These are my favorites. Okay, yeah, I'm satisfied with these results. So I cannot wait to share the images and to start editing with you. So I will need just a few minutes to um, untether the camera and I will go back to you again. See you soon. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ravana. While Yovana gets everything set up, one more thing that I wanted to talk about, which we didn't touch upon, is on the second link that you can see, we have the Monitors for Mac by BenQ uh, page. We know that for a lot of you users, for a lot of artists nowadays, one of the main questions that we actually get is, hey, is the, are the BenQ monitors really built with, with the Mac ecosystem in mind? We know, of course, that not everyone uses PC, but there's obviously a lot of Mac users as well. Um, on the page, you can find all of the different features, all the different softwares and all the different tools that BenQ is offering to the market, is offering to Mac users, a lot of which are actually BenQ exclusive that really assure that you have the best and smoothest experience with your, uh, with your Mac monitor from the connection, from the colors, from the features, from the software standpoint, and really just from the productivity and efficiency standpoint as well. So that's something else that we really encourage all of you to uh, all of you to check out. One more note I'll make if you go to the either to the Instagram page or to the upcoming webinars page, you can also see one of our upcoming webinars for tomorrow actually with a French photographer Hayes Square. Okay. I'm here. I'm back. Okay, uh, before before we go into the editing, I want to you ask, do you use continuous slide or do you use flash if you are creating photos inside? I am very interested to know because I'm not a big fan of the flashes because I don't have control over it. But with the continuous slide, I can see what is happening on the scene and it, it is much easier. So let's see, what do you say? Most of you said, uh -huh, continuous slide. And flash. Okay, most of you said continuous slides, so uh, yes, we are in the same group. <laughs> I understand. Okay, let's now move on to the next scene where I want to talk about the equipment. So it is so important to have equipment which you will work with. So um, is the camera, is the monitor, and is the lenses and everything additional you want to make more the scene more interesting and more more quality so when it comes to equipment is important to capture a good photo you need a creative tools and what are they camera having a good camera is a great but you can practice storytelling with a smartphone or camera on a budget when storytelling so um yeah to me camera is a good but the most important to me is the lenses so wide angle or not lenses are much more important than the camera prime lenses is are the must 
The next additional equipment, such as lightning, reflect, uh, reflectors, and backdrops. If you want to make the scene more interesting, make sure to use uh, backdrops and this additional um, equipment. Editing software, Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro for videos, tablet for editing. Tablet gets so much editing easier, and you can you have more control over the movements you are using in the photos, and especially if you are uh, spending more time when you are doing the face editing. And the most important to me uh, is having the good monitor, like the camera. So it is a camera for me with my eyes when I sing. So currently I'm using the BenQ SW272U photography monitor, and I'm really satisfied with this monitor. It's my favorite. I use the BenQ for five years, and I can say only wow, because um, to me they have like the most quality mo monitors, and to me is most important thing when I'm searching for a good monitor, to me is important to have um, nice color, to see the true colors. Like I'm sitting on the set, I want to see on the, on the screen when editing, when seeing the photo. I want to see what is actually happening with colors and everything. And with the BenQ, I've got it all. What I love, also I want to share that you have a discount um, on PDN SWV series, which you can, uh, by using the code while I'm talking. So <clears throat> what else I love about this monitor is the fine coated panel. So this means that if you have any reflection and light source going uh, on the screen, I had the problems before when I'm using the regular monitor, when every time when I see reflections, I can strongest light. I love the size of this monitor I'm using currently as W272U because it's 27 4K inches monitor. The previous one was 32. Um, it's perfect, but its size is a bit bigger for my liking. So the 27 inch is almost the perfect because it's, you see the details, but it's not too big. You are not like on the TV and you have to go left and right and to make like big movements all the way. The next thing is wireless hockey puck, so you can chase the modes easily. So you can switch to sRGB, RGB, and black and white mode, and very easily without the cable. So every time when we use the PC, there is so many cables around you, but with wireless hockey puck, uh, the life is so much easier. And USB-C connectivity, now I can easily connect my MacBook with a monitor and with a screen and now I can edit and I don't need like additional um, cables. What also is like the vertical and horizontal mode so you can switch easily and you can edit the portraits and um, horizontal photos. I'm a little bit an old school. I love to edit. Uh, so I don't edit this way that much, but I cannot wait to test this feature more, more um, in the future. And uh, yeah, this is the most, I think, Every time I say this, but I'm very satisfied. And if you are struggling which monitor to buy, to buy I think the BenQ will be always my choice because uh, when I saw the true colors immediately, to me is like, I'm done. I'm done with the monitors. And before I was using the regular, especially if you are a hobby photographer and want to do it professionally, you have to have a professional monitor to edit. So yeah, this will be always the choice. Okay, now, I want you to ask, uh, how do you edit your photos with? So I'm very interested to see, do you use regular monitor, professional monitor, or a laptop? And yeah, because if you're using the laptop and regular monitor, I think it's, now is the time to switch to professional monitor. Let's see, professional monitor, nice. Regular laptop. Let's see what is the best. I want to... There is a huge difference between the regular and professional monitor. Like, wow, I just cannot describe. Most of you said professional, nice. Then laptop and regular monitor, nice, okay. I use laptop when I travel, when, when I want to edit in speed, but usually the PC is always a choice. Thank you so much. Okay, now we can move to editing the images from this set. So I will now share the screen with you and I want to show you which image I choose from the set. Let's see. The first one will be the one with a candle. It's this one. 
So um, what I like about this image is that I have enough copy space around on the left side, on the right side, and I have a beautiful fantasy bokeh um, behind the model, and we have a nice light going into the model's face. So first, when I open the image, I see in camera, camera raw settings what I want to change. So it is a little bit yellow, this image, so I want to make it more, this like more cooler tone and exposure, I want to add it more down. You see, when I add it down, I have more sparkle in the eye. Usually I love to hear to change the contrast, exposure, highlights, not something too many things, but, and highlights. If you want more details in the skin, you see now it's two highlights, maybe around here, and shadows, I love, I love to add a little bit more. Okay, nice. Yeah, I think this is. If I want to change something more, I will, again, do it later. But now I'm satisfied with this. Okay, when I open the image, first thing I want to make it uh, to, to zoom in and to uh, remove uh, the blemishes. So how I will do it? I will the, duplicate the layer like this, sorry duplicate the layer and now I will put the opacity around 60 because I don't want to, too harsh uh, pressure on the on, on the face because if I make the 100 it will be like circle in the in the face and we don't want to do this and I will use this part where we have blemish and put it on the next to it because we, we want to have the same light make sure to choose the same light don't put it here but put, put it next to it like this, here. Yeah. Everything I want to remove, I will remove this way. You see this red mark. Maybe like this. Let's see more. She don't have so much blemishes, but make sure to choose a model for your personal projects, always without too many blemishes, because it gets so much easier with editing. Maybe this also. Okay, nice. Here, you see, before, after. Here, I uh, I don't like to have too many layers, so that's why I merge visible. Here, I will remove with spot healing brush tool, and I will make two small just for the hair, and I will do only this because I don't have too much hair going into the face, and I'm following only the line. And here we have. Okay, nice. Let's see. I will zoom out a little bit just to see the hands. Hands are okay. I will zoom in and now I'll make the foundation on her face. So we have different light sources on the face. We have different lights on the chin, on the chin, on the forehead and on in the middle part of the face. So that is why I will use the mixer brush tool. It's this one. And <coughs> sorry. And I will choose the lights. You see when I tap here it choose this color. When I tap here, this color. So it's changing. So make sure to always change and always choose from the center. I will say maybe this is the main color of the face. And how long the part is where you want to add it, this is the size of a brush. And make sure to this have four of these parts to have up to 10, these numbers. Nine, eight is okay. And go only to this. And small amount. I will duplicate the layer just for you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so this part, I love to use it somewhere from here and make it a little bit smaller. When I'm editing at home, I usually uh, use the tablet. Now I'm using the mouse like this. And here we have darker spots. And I want to, you see here like this, you see, before and after, we smoothen the skin and we set up like the foundation of her skin by this tool. I really love using this tool and so it's so amazing. It adds so much into the face. And now I will merge visible again because I don't like to have so many layers. Next, I want to have more sparkle in her eyes and on her face. So I will use the dodge tool. I will make it a little bit smaller, you see, and make it like her eyes are shining like this and I will highlight every part where it's like the makeup where the lights are uh, naturally there 
on the chin, then um, on the, in the eyes, uh, under the brows, and everything. It's like you're placing the makeup, but a little bit stronger makeup and more sparkly, you see? I'm adding more po popping out effect on her face, on her mouth a little bit, then on the chin, like this. Nice. Let's see, I love to zoom out every time to see if I want to add a little bit more in the background. I love to add it more because I want to make it pop out a little bit more, the scene, but I will make it bigger because the scene is bigger, that part. Nice. I love everything that is happening in front of her face because everything is there. Nice. Now I want to add more volume into the hair and I'm using the liquify tool. It's this one. And I love this tool because every time if I have, if, if I want to add more volume into the dress and on her hair, I will use this tool. Oh, it's too much. And you have to think only about the size and this tool. Okay, make sure go small steps because you never know what, if you have some strong visible lines behind the model, then you have to be very uh, careful with, with this tool, because if you spread, the whole line will be spreaded also. You can duplicate the layer, then spread the hair, and then delete the part you spread it. That's the other part, you can do it. Nice. Here I will go a little bit, because we are closer to the eye, and we don't want to spread the eye <laughs> here, so make sure to go the smaller parts like this wow love it i will add a little bit more here you can also the decoration to spread the flowers you see like this okay nice i will save the image this is my favorite tool i'll really love using every time you see how much the perspective can add okay now i'm satisfied with this and i want to um I don't know why this is not showing, but I will use image adjustments and go to selective colors. And here, every color we have on the photo, I will uh, it will change. So we have red, let's see. I will add more depth into the image by using the red a little bit down. Then, let's see, uh -huh. I will make it more yellowish like this. I will not add too much, but a little bit like this yellow we have more yellow here on the face but make sure to only use yellow here tone because if you use magenta and cyan it will change the color scheme you want the color scheme to have the same to not change it this is so good i would love to add blacks a little bit more to add more the pop out effect and what else yeah the whites we have the whites and i love to add it a little bit you see if we add this is too much but I will something like this. Okay, click OK. And then I will add more, more the curves. I want to add more contrast into the image. I usually love to go a little bit like this up and then to make it this curve a little bit, you see, to have more contrast into the image. This is too much, but somewhere here is okay. Nice. Okay, now what I'm thinking, I'm thinking to go again to filter and camera raw, just to make the exposure a li little bit down, because I want the, her face, you see, like this. Wow, I love it, it gives more depth and it gives more storytelling into the image. Nice, I really love it more darker, yes, like this. Oh, I love it. Nice. Now, if you want, you can change. You can change the. You see, like this. No, I would leave it like at the beginning. I am very satisfied with this image, so I will now save it. File, save copy. Then you can choose whatever you want to save and make sure to file to be maximum, like this. Okay. If you are uh, saving for social media, make sure to go to the image image size and make sure to choose the bigger size to put it around 1050. And then go to the file, export, save for web, and save it for as 
PNG because PNG saves more details and the whole image is get more details, more details, and it uh, doesn't lose, lose the quality afterwards. I will now, okay. Okay, then we will go to the next image, which will be this one. Let's see if, no, it will be this one. Oh, I'm very satisfied with this. This is my favorite. I love it. When I open again, I love to change the exposure and to again go a little bit, not cool too much. Let's see. Oh, wow. I love this tone. I will leave it this way. So make sure to always play with the tones. You never know how it will be at the end. Highlights a little bit down and shadows a little bit up. And we will open the image. Okay, I'm very satisfied. Now I will duplicate the layer just to have it more control what I'm doing with the face. I will zoom in and do it again. Put around 60 and then the, use the patch tool. And just somebody will leave this bird mark, but I'm not. It's not like the big one, so I will remove it this way. It's not, we don't have so many things here with a patch tool, but more with another tool, which is, you see this spot healing brush tool. I will now just remove the hair a little bit, make it more smaller because we don't want to smooth it up around the model's face. And make sure to always go at the end of the hair. Do not cut it like in the middle. Okay, I'm satisfied with this. Let's just zoom out to see. Okay, with a mixer brush. Again, choose the light on the face. I love this. Yeah, you see. Nice. Let's see on the other side. It's almost the same color. And always it's getting darker here, but it's naturally you have shades. So I will put it like this. Oh, nice. It's smooth and scale, but don't overdo it. Make sure to always be moderate when you're doing, like not go. I know uh, during my workshops, most of the people are, oh, this is my favorite tool ever. Now I will the whole face and it's lo it looks like a doll. So make sure to use it in a moderate way. Okay. Now, uh, I'm satisfied with this. I will use the dodge tool and make it more the pop out, pop out like this. Oh, now the eyeshadow will pop out, you see how? And with this also be, don't overdo it. And make sure to model use, um, how to say, not lipstick that shines, liquid lipstick because in that case it will be more more um, interesting with the whole scene is this let's see is this on my laptop yes okay i love the face here and if the model has something on the on her skin make sure to always go with a mixer brush tool like this and to smoother do not leave the hands she's okay now i can leave it without but okay well let's finish now I want to add more into his, uh, on the head, more here details, because I want to add more, oh, this is too much, like this, yes. And on her face, you see, the face pop out, nice. Okay, now the filter and liquify, I want to add more volume. So here we, it will be a little bit tricky because we have this on her head but we will do it a little bit because here it's not visible too much but it will add more perspective into the image you see it adds like it's it's like a fairy queen and we have more um, blurry background so this is also nice when spreading the image okay nice I love it Somewhere around the face, the lines, make sure to think about the lines and to go the small, uh, the size smaller when it comes around, oh, this is too much, around the face. I love it. Click OK. 
And always, if you're not sure, make sure to duplicate the image and make sure to always save as PCD if you want to re-edit the images. I know I have control over them, so I'm not saving in PCD, but for you, if you want to practice, make sure to do it. Okay, now we will go to the adjustments and selective colors. First, we will add it in red. Oh, nice. Then yellow. Let's see. Huh, I love it. I hate when I, I love the two edits. You see, in the yellow is okay, and with the fade effect, it's okay. Maybe, maybe like this, and then more blacks. What more color we have here? Whites. Not too much. And yeah, I'm satisfied with this. I will save it. And now I will go to curves again and do the same. More contrast. Sometimes you have to add more contrast, sometimes less. It really depends based on the light and the whole image. Now I want to add a photo filter. So it adds the whole uh, the color over the image. So let's see to choose which color. Hmm, so maybe something green is nice because it goes with the yellow. Yeah, this is the tone. So you can put more or less. No, this is, this is okay. Okay, this one. Okay, and now I want to again go to the filter and camera roll, just to make it more exposure down. So I'm not sure. Yeah, like this is the best. Maybe contrast. And up. Let's see, no, no, no. Like this. But maybe temperature. Yeah, and this. I love it this way. And maybe I will just crop it a little bit like this. I will Command T and then spread the image. And maybe do like this composition. This is nice. I love how we can, how we have the lights over here, we have bokeh here, and we have the model in the center. So it adds so much into the scene. Let's see the next, like this. If I. No, but I'm more into the, the like the first one. Yeah. Okay. I will save a copy. Okay. Save it like this. And maximum file and okay. Okay, I'm done with this editing part. Now we will go to the survey room. And I wanted to ask you before this, what is your favorite software tool in the Photoshop you love to use? Make sure to write the words. I'm interesting to know what you will write. Liquify. Mixer brush, yeah, I love the mixer brush too. Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh -huh. I'm thinking uh, not the software, but I'm thinking the tool in the software, in the Photoshop. What tool do you love? Like liquify tool, brush, mixer brush, Photoshop, in the Photoshop, in the program. Okay, so liquify, yeah. <laughs> the liquify is the best, like I said. Let's see, mixer, if you spot healing and liquify yeah because with the liquify you can add so many things and it looks so amazing and you can you can spread the scene you can spread the dress you can spread the hair everything you can change the lines and so many things okay yeah i'm satisfied with with the results okay before we go to the questions 
I want to say at the end, you, but don't go still because we will be answering your questions, but uh, at the end of this presentation, I want to say that use the simple props for the light. Uh, if you add too much lights and uh, into the scene, you will uh, you will be lost and you make sure to have only one light source or if you don't have like additional artificial lights, make sure to use the candles like uh, if you want to imitate the lights somehow. Experiment. Don't make sure to experiment as many as you can, because, because with experimentation you can change the whole perspective. You can get to the new ideas. You can change the whole brain. Uh, how to say it? the mindset when you experiment. So experiment with the model. Experiment with the editing. Experiment with the lights, with the locations, with the props. And you need around one two months just to see what works the best for you. Create an atmosphere. Don't only place the model. Make sure how you can create the atmosphere. It makes, uh, if you want to add the smoke machine, smoke effects, it adds so much into the scene and the whole scene gets more dreamy into the, the, whole, the whole effect. Make sure to use uh, like atmosphere, the lights, Christmas lights. Make sure to use the lights from the uh, window if you're close to the light source. Make sure to experiment uh, with the atmosphere also. Uh, if you don't have a smoke machine, you can use lightener and then you can uh, light up the candle and then the, like this and you will have the smoke in this case. So make sure to think how you can do this the best way. And make sure to enjoy the whole pro the process because if you enjoy it, then you will have the best results with it. Now I, will, I want to answer your questions. Let's see what you asked. Okay, now I will be editing. Uh, I will be putting the file files for you, which you can edit. So while Yovana uploads the pictures, uh, you can now here answer answer the survey, and we'll be getting to the Q and A as well. Uh, we've already gotten a, quite a couple of questions during the webinar, but feel free to also ask your questions now that you have for Yovana. Uh, I also already wanted to say a really big thank you to Yovana. You've seen all of the work, all of the logistics that Yovana went through to prepare her studio, to get, uh, get things ready with the model, to have an assistant on the day, to really show us her full uh, process. It really is a lot of work that went, uh, went into it. So we're really extremely grateful for that. And uh, I hope all, for all of you also, this was a, this was a great experience as well. And um, yeah, uh, for, for those of you who will not be staying around for the, the Q&A, uh, as you know, we will be sending the discount code to you in the follow-up email. And uh, be sure to follow Yovana also to, to be up to date on all of her events and all the different work that she's doing. Uh, we also have many more webinars coming up, uh, actually one more tomorrow and many more in the coming year as well. But uh, a big thank you again to, to Yovana. Be sure to leave your questions down here below. Thank you. We'll also you have very any questions, soon, yeah. We'll also very soon here have the files for you to download as well, which Yovana will be uploading right now. Yeah, I, I'm done. I'm, I need just a more time. Mm -hmm. Just a few minutes. Make sure to ask, let's see, okay, I will now drag the files for you and I'm so interesting to send me your edits because I want to see how everything look like. I will share five images with you today. Okay. Should we start um, with the sure. questions? We have one question uh, asking about what does Yovana think about AI with editing? Is she using that? And this is, uh, yes. if I'm saying the name correctly, Boban, who says he's a big fan from Serbia. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Boban. Uh, when first AI uh, arrives, I was like, oh, no, this is not something I will go for. But now I'm slowly changing my mindset. I won't say uh, I want to do it um, full AI, but if something I have to remove, I have uh, to have more control over the images, I will use it like not AI, but generative feel, you know, so I will use it. 
in that case. Mm -hmm. uh, you should also already be seeing the first image, which you can download. If yeah. you see on the right window, it says today's raw images, and you can download the, the images. It takes time because it's a raw file, so <laughs> it will appear soon. <laughs> We have a, a question. Size. We have a question from Gabriel who asks, "What lens are you using for the Canon?" And if I'm saying this correctly, the Canon 4D uh, number four. Uh, depending if you want more wide angle shots or portraits. For portraits, uh, I would go for 135 or 105 1.4 lens, uh, 135 uh, 2.0. Uh, if you're creating, if you need more wide angle shots, then I will go for 35 uh, millimeters, 1.4 Sigma art lenses because they have the most. Uh, I think you have you have to have a uh, lens for the wide angle shots and the po for the portrait so shots because you will need it. We have a question from Daria who's asking, how much money does it take to create a scene like this? And I think she's assuming to your studio scene that you've created. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, it really depends if you are creating photos uh, during the session. Uh, if you have like more natural flowers or you have to bring more flowers if the, the winter, you don't have uh, more flowers in the nature, but it takes from 100 to whatever you want. It's like more until 500 euros usually. But if uh, during the spring you have more uh, natural um, in nature, you have more flowers, so the budget is more down in that case. But min yep. min 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 minimum one uh, hundred euros. We have a question from Stanislava, who's asking, "What is your next project and inspiration?" Uh, I'm create. Uh, I'm thinking to create something in winter in snow, where I will be using uh, big uh, glass. Uh, it's two meters big and I want to it looks like frozen and the model inside and I don't want to reveal anything but I'm very excited for this project and also I'm preparing more of the workshops next year so I'm very happy about it yeah for for those of you who don't know Jovan is extremely really extremely proactive when it comes to these uh, these types of photo shoots and the, the workshops we've really seen some incredible work where she's working with 10, 15, even more people at the same time and going through her whole process. And uh, it's a really great question about her project because they're, they're always very exciting. It's so uh, exhausting and you need more um, controlling over, you, you, you have to maintain the assistants, the decorator, the model and ev uh, everyone involved, but uh, it's the process. So when I was starting, I uh, didn't have, I was only myself, but now I have a scenographer and assistant and people who, a uh, person who is making the prop. So there is always in your career where you get to the point where you want it and where you are growing. So th th that's the case. We have a question from Gabriel who's asking about the raw images. He's asking, can we post the edits on Instagram and tag Giovanna? Yes, sure. I'm very excited to see your images and how you will edit. So I'm very excited and I will be scrolling over my Instagram today and don't uh, sleep over unless you edit the image because you have to, you know, have the guess for the editing now. We have a question from Emilia who's asking about the who's asking about the images if they can be downloaded elsewhere. So about the images, uh, if you contact the BenQ, BenQ Europe webinar email, which you should be seeing in your in the emails you receive for today's webinar, uh, if you contact the team there, they might be able to supply you the, the raw images for you to download. We would recommend to download them here, though, as this is a more, uh, more a higher guarantee. Uh, we have a question from Daria, who's asking, what were the settings for, for today for the camera? Uh, the depth of field, the focal length was uh, 2.0, I said uh, during the session. Uh, the shutter speed changing from two, uh, 260 up to 300 and ISO from 500 to 1000. So this is how usually it's it really uh, depends on the light source because when I change the position, the light changed. So I, most of the time, I always, uh, for each scene, I change the light. It's not the same all uh, over again. 
We have a question from uh, Lucy asking about the webinar itself and asking if the recording will be made available later on. Uh, typically, the webinars are uploaded about a month later onto the AccuColor uh, YouTube channel. And you'll also see there are actually a lot of webinars we've done in the past with Giovanna about all kinds of different topics as well. So we recommend to, to look into that. We have another question from Boban, who says that his first time seeing your work was the photo of an albino girl with, uh, with a black man's hands on her face. And he says, do you have something that you are the most proud of from all of your work? Or is there something which you like the most from your work? Oh my God, this is the question. You said something very proud of most of your love. I'm proud for all, all of my works because uh, all of my emotions are in my images. So every time when I see these images, I know the feelings. And uh, I'm proud of the moment that when people are writing to me and saying, Yovana, you changed my mindset or you changed my life by this image. I was like, oh my God, this, this is deep. This is so big. And this means so much to me, your support and your words. And if I can change somebody's life, wow, with one image. So it's, I'm proud of this, you know, and uh, I like the most, I'm, I love to create the most of my life. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that's, that's quite touching. Um, Lolly is asking, what are your inspiration sources and what other photographers do you admire? Mm -hmm. uh, my inspiration comes from usually my dreams in life and people who I met. So if I speak to someone's person and I love how they speak, I uh, when I hear something about what is happening uh, from my life, uh, I love to interpret, it, in, um, input this into the, my image. So uh, if I feel sad, uh, I don't, I feel so emotional when I say when I say this. But when I um, when my father passed away, uh, it was the most emotional. Uh, ever the feeling I had so with this I had the strongest uh, to create in the in when that happened so usually from emotions and the life and the nature excellent yes we have one uh, one person actually wrote into the um, into the survey and it's not so much a question but just a comment that they would love to see more about the printing process in, as well. I don't know if, Jovan, if you have any notes about your printing process. Usually I have a people who print the photos, so I'm now discovering the printing process. I'm using the printer, so maybe in the next webinar we, we can discuss this more. <laughs> Great, yes. Let us know if you have any more any more questions. See now, Yovana has provided really quite a lot of images. So another another thing to be grateful for. Yeah. Maybe some of them are duplicated if I press it twice, but usually, but it will be five six images, and I'm very excited to see your editing flow and how you how the whole image will be at the end. And make sure to download them. We have a couple more okay. questions here. Uh, Anika doesn't have a question, but she just says, thank you for your great photos and your tips. Thank you so uh, much. Well, we have a question from Tessa. How do you, how do you find clients for your photography style? Uh -huh. This one is so interesting because I think every photography style has their own clients. Usually the problem become when the people find the clients from the other niche. If you're a dreamy photographer and they are finding from somebody from fashion industry. And this can be a really disturbing because uh, this client is for other niche. Um, when I was starting with photography, usually I write down the emails and uh, speaking with the brands. Uh, most of the time I didn't get the answer, but there was some of them who they answered and uh, they are still my clients. Uh, but usually clients uh, find me on Instagram and they love my style and they say they want something different and they want something new in, 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 in innovative <laughs> and they want to change like the mindset of, of their brands and that's why they, they want to present it more different so that is how they find me usually from behance instagram and uh, website uh, 
Gabriel is asking, maybe we can we can do this. He's asking, can we also get, get a raw image with the candle in the hands? He says he really loved that scene. Uh-huh. Let's see. I will now add it just to find because I created so many images. I usually cannot stop when I start creating. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see which one is the best. I will add it. Yeah. Okay, now I will add it. Yeah, it's this one. It's uploading, so yeah, you will have the candle image. And we have one, another comment from Vanya, who just says, you're such an inspiration and thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, Vanya, so much. I see some uh, similar, uh, familiar names here, so <laughs> thank you so much. That's excellent. That's great. It's uh, still uploading, it's still uploading, AT. The raw files are huge, so th that is the best. Make sure to save it as raw because later on you can um, save it as JPEG and you will have more control over the editing. Yeah, yeah if there are no it. if there are no more questions, now would be the last time to uh, last time to send them. But in case we don't, uh, I just want to say one once again thank you to everyone for for attending today's webinar. Uh, and a really big thank you to Yovana for really all of the the work and passion that went into the into the webinar. And uh, really, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of rehearsal, a lot of uh, work, and a lot of organization to get something like this off the ground with uh, the studio setting, with the model, with the assistant, with the lighting, with the camera, the tether. There really is a lot of equipment and a lot of work that goes into this. And we're really very grateful for for all of the dedication, all the passion that Yovana puts into this. And to hopefully give all of you here that are uh, are also having a fantastic experience with that. So really big thank you to um, uh, to Yovana. Uh, and yes, as said, the uh, the discount code will be sent to um, will be sent to all of you by 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 email uh, shortly. And uh, we're looking forward to welcome you all at at future webinars. Thank you so much, Vicente. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys, and see you in next year. Excellent. Wishing everyone a great evening. Bye.